A few months back, I purchased a Central Pneumatics airbrush compressor from an auction site that was listed real cheap, but as is. While unboxing it, I noticed the seller included what looked to be a Pash Model H airbrush as a surprise freebie. I think it's vintage as it's engraved with the old style logo, made in the USA, and Type H above near the trigger button. It looks like it's seen better days, it's missing the trigger button too. I wonder if it still works. I have an extra spare airbrush jar. I'm gonna run some water through it and test to see if it works. There it goes. The spray pattern doesn't look right, and it's kind of pulsating a bit. Opening and closing the nozzle should gradually and smoothly increase and decrease the size and flow of the spray pattern. But there's something wrong with the nozzle or needle, because when I open the nozzle, the spray pattern seems erratic, and when I close it, it actually seems to open up the spray pattern even more. I'm gonna take it apart and inspect the nozzle and needle to see what the problem is. Maybe it's just dirty. It looks pretty clean though. Upon a closer look, you can see the needle is worn where it meets the needle packing in the nozzle. I'm gonna inspect the needle packing now. I removed the packing brass nut using a small flathead screwdriver. Then using a curved scrap tool, I pull the needle packing. The packing seems okay at first, but compared to a new packing, it looks a tiny bit stretched out. It looks worn out. Reinstallation is the same in reverse. I like to put the flat side of the needle packing facing towards the nozzle tip. Pash also recommends coating the brass nut threads with a small amount of petroleum jelly before reinstallation. Tighten the packing nut, then reinstall the needle. If the needle and nozzle adjustment is too tight or too loose when opening and closing the nozzle, remove the needle and tighten or loosen the packing nut and test again until the needle and nozzle adjustment feels smooth with just a tiny bit of drag. Another thing I noticed in this particular airbrush is that it was set up with a number 3 needle and a number 3 air cap. but it had a number 5 nozzle installed. And the air cap's o-ring is dry rotted and collapsed. There's quite a few things wrong with this airbrush. Well, only one thing left to do. Time to order parts. Parts have arrived. I ordered several spares. I start by disassembling the airbrush. Then I carefully begin disassembling the air valve.
The square nut is under tension from the spring. Take care not to let it spring away from you because it's very small and it will be nearly impossible to find if it gets away from you. Remove the spring. Then the air valve. The o-ring on the air valve plunger looks a bit dry, but that's alright because I'll be replacing the entire valve plunger. Using some rubbing alcohol, I give the airbrush a good cleaning. Then, I take a little bit of metal polish paste and very lightly remove the surface oxidation from the nickel plating. I lightly polish the surface to avoid stripping down the nickel plating. Plating is much shinier and reflective now. Looks good! A clean and polished airbrush body makes it easy to clean off paint that may get on it later. I also polish the air cap. Next I will be replacing the air valve and trigger button. I got a spare air valve nut as well, but I will be reusing the original. Notice that the valve plunger has a flathead screwdriver slot that it's used to tighten the trigger button. First I insert the valve plunger, then the spring. Take care not to strip the air valve nut as it's made out of delicate brass and it's somewhat tricky to get it to thread properly at the start. To avoid stripping the nut, lightly tighten it. Next, I partially thread the trigger button on the air valve plunger. And using a micro flathead screwdriver, I'll hold the valve plunger in place as I screw on the trigger button. To verify it's properly tightened, spin the trigger button both ways and look inside the valve to see if the valve plunger spins along with it. Next, I remove the old air cap o-ring. and replace it with a fresh one. Screw and hand tighten the air cap on the airbrush body. Then back it off so that the opening lines up with the nozzle path. Since the original needle was worn out and the nozzle wasn't the correct size, I chose to buy a replacement needle and nozzle set.
To install, first remove the nozzle from the needle and place the nozzle tip inside the air cap. Then insert the needle through the needle mount and begin screwing the nozzle to the needle. Once the needle base is sitting properly on the needle mount, install and hand tighten the set screw. Check everything is working properly. Next, I wipe the handle using some rubbing alcohol. And reinstall it on the airbrush. And that's it! The airbrush should work properly now. Now, to test the airbrush using some alcohol. The spray pattern looks great, and the adjustment is working smoothly and properly now. Now for some optional upgrades. A nice sturdy red anodized aluminum handle to replace the original plastic handle. Looking good. Some more random testing. It sprays and feels nice. Pash sells a small quarter ounce metal cup that allows the Model H airbrush to spray smaller quantities of paint. The Model H sprays relatively nice thin lines for an external mix airbrush. And lays down very good base coats as well. Now to test it on some landing gear doors. It works like a charm. I had a lot of fun restoring the Model H. I definitely appreciate why it has been the classic workhorse for many decades among scale modelers. It's easy to use, easy to maintain, easy to repair, and it's very affordable. It's a great quality airbrush. If you liked the video and would like to see more like these, hit that like button and subscribe. That'll let me know that you like this type of content, and I'll keep making videos like these in the future. That's it for this Let's Fix video. I hope you had a great time and I hope to see you here on the next video.